Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the U.S.-India Trade II Defense and Aerospace Opportunities between the U.S. and India. We are so grateful to have you here uh, on behalf of the Minority Business Development Agency, the Denver CARES Act Assistance Program. We are pleased to host this particular event in partnership with the National U.S. India Chamber of Commerce and Warria. So we are extremely excited for each of you to participate with us. And again, we welcome you and look forward to learning uh, so much today. Uh, we want to jump right in. Again, this event is being recorded, so we want to make sure that everyone is well aware of that. Uh, there is a chat feature as well. And so feel free to post your questions in the chat feature uh, should you have some. Uh, but we have a very distinguished group of panelists that are joining us today. And again, we are very grateful. With that, let me begin by introducing Maria. She's the founder and CEO of the National U.S. India Chamber of Commerce. It is recognized as an international organization with its global headquarters in the great state of Colorado, serving all 50 states in the U.S. and Asia headquarters in India. The mission of the NUICC is to promote bilateral trade and investments between U.S. and India for small, medium, and large corporations with government and business relationships that result in business deals. The NUICC has been an advisor to the United Secretary of Commerce for the MBDA, a federal agency. It shaped to shape future policies and programs that set a foundation for growth and policymaking for 7.8 million businesses a trillion dollar economy within the U.S. Over the past 15 years, the chamber has grown to have 10,000 members across a wide spectrum of industries. At this time, I would like to welcome our friend and partner, Pernima Berea. Take, take your phone off mute. Take your device off mute. Good morning, everyone from Denver, Colorado, United States of America, and good evening to everyone joining us from India. Namaste. I am so grateful to our honorable minister who is able to join us and would like to welcome him for his continued support and encouragement to all of us. And if um, I may ask Marvin to show the slide on the chamber and the video of India, and I'll continue to talk as he does so. So as you can see, the National U.S. India Chamber of Commerce has been promoting trade between United States and, and India for a decade. And we also have Asia headquarters in India, in Jaipur, Rajasthan. And the reason we started that there is so that supply, the manufacturing in India is going to take over all the supply chains, at least all over Asia, if not the globe. So that is the reason we wanted our headquarters, Asia headquarters in India. Uh, can you continue to put, put the slides one after another? Yes, please, thank you. So we provide expertise and contacts and we cultivate business relationships uh, and often uh, those result in business deals. So we serve as a business consultant to small and large corporations and uh, industry trade association, help them with business markets and to source their product and services uh, to uh, local partners, identify the roadmap for the businesses and connect them and cement them to conduct, to have business deals in India. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, next, please. Our vision is again, our mission is to promote bilateral trade between the United States and India. And we were very specialized just between US and India. But as the global economy is changing our, our business, uh, we are serving other nations as well. So again, we can go ahead. I have already said uh, what the, and similar services are for the US companies and 
uh, we do the same for the India companies and give them presence here in the United States. Overall, India is a great opportunity and that is the reason we are having this today. And now you'll see a little video of getting to know India. Marvin. Is it working, Maru? I don't hear the music, so I think there should be music in the background. If it's not working in essence of time for the minister, let's go ahead. So first of all, minister, uh, I would like to uh, again express my gratitude for your time, for your support, for your friendship. Before that, I would like to mention that we were supposed to get the ambassador of India, but due to conflict of his schedule, we are so grateful to a great friend of the chamber and all of us, uh, which is Honorable Council General of India, Asim Mahajanji. And I would like to showcase my gratitude to him for always supporting us, always coming through for us, no matter what short notice he's given. And he's a great promoter and a friend of India and United States. I would like to say that Asim Mahajanji joined the Indian Foreign Services in 1998 prior to assuming charge as Council General of India in Houston. In January of 2020, he was Ambassador DPR of India to the World Trade Organization, Geneva. In his earlier diplomatic assignments, he had served as Deputy High Commissioner in Indian Missions in, in Indian Missions for Kuala Lumpur and Dhaka and as Council General in Osaka, Japan. He has served in Indian missions in Tokyo and in Vientiane, Laos. In his stints in Ministry of External Affairs, his New Delhi, he has served various desks, handling affairs related to United Nations, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Maldives. One of my favorite places. Besides, he also serves as a staff officer to Minister of State for External Affairs and as Joint Secretary coordinating the management of annual Hajj pilgrimage of India. He has master's degree in diplomatic studies and many other degrees. And with that, I would like to say a warm welcome to Council General Asim R. Mahajanji in Houston, representing the entire India for us. And um, I would like to say namaste and welcome Council General and thank you for your support. Take it over. Right. So, thank you, Purnimaji. Shri uh, Shripad Naik, Honorable Minister for Ayush and Defense, uh, distinguished speakers, representatives of companies, chambers. Good morning to all those who are joining us from United States, and uh, good evening to people who are joining from India. It gives me great pleasure to join this webinar today, which is focusing on the opportunities in the area of defense and aerospace uh, between India and United States. As two vibrant democracies having open and multicultural societies, India and United States are natural partners. Our comprehensive partnership is broad based with growing engagement in areas like energy, defense, security, technology, trade and investment, and people to people contact. And as uh, Purnimaji, you have highlighted, we also share a very strong connect between this part of United States and India. Our bilateral trade and investment, which our trade, which stood at $150 billion in 2019, has been registering uh, double-digit growth over the last few years. Investments between both countries are also growing. And during the current pandemic also, we have been uh, cooperating closely in areas like medical research, healthcare, innovation, technology, and strengthening our partnership in global supply chains. 
we uh, recently organized an event with the support of the governor and the state of colorado which also focused on aerospace defense and uh, new areas of advanced manufacturing we colorado as you know is home to several leading companies and institutions uh, we have a very a good group of speakers today who are representing companies from aerospace defense and they are pioneers in their areas of innovation we also have companies from the fields of defense telecommunications healthcare and education the state also ranks high in its uh, business environment and has run a very successful advanced uh, industry accelerator program with a variety of businesses which offers a great opportunity for indian companies to connect we are trying to strengthen and build that connect and i'm happy to report to honorable minister also that in the last couple of months there have been growing exchanges between indian and us companies with over 2000 companies already present in india and over 150 companies present in united states the number is growing investments are growing the breadth of sectors is growing and there is a great positivity and hope on both sides that this relationship will take great strides Uh, honorable minister will be sharing uh, on uh, our defense manufacturing but it is one of the pioneering areas under our make in india program the companies who have joined today as i mentioned are pioneers in their own area of work but let me just briefly highlight a few uh, incentives and government policy initiatives which have been taken recently uh, government of india has launched a comprehensive modernization plan which offers vast opportunities for industry partnerships in the area of defense and innovation and technology which is represented by companies today and uh, we have many participants focusing on those areas 100% foreign direct investment is also allowed in defense industries uh, with 74% under automatic route and beyond 74% under government route the private sector participation for indigenous manufacturing i wish to highlight opens great avenues for establishing long term strategic partnerships between indian companies and global original equipment manufacturers i think this is a great opportunity for us companies who hold technology and who who are global equipment uh, manufacturers and the process is followed through a very transparent and uh, competitive bidding process to seek technology transfers which will enable uh, setting up of domestic manufacturing in india and also strengthen partnership in our supply chains there are several other policy policy support initiatives i will be happy to share in detail with all those who are joining today and this is an ongoing initiative we will continue to exchange information but some of them include uh, a dedicated uh, defense investor cell which honorable minister is here today and uh, they they will facilitate answer all your queries share with you the various opportunities the various avenues we have dedicated industrial corridors in the states of tamil nadu and uttar pradesh which are focused on manufacturing for the defense industry promoting innovation is one of the pioneering features of our new incentives uh, which government is offering then you have authorization for exports and several other incentives i will as i mentioned i will be more than happy to engage individually with companies and partners who would like to get more information we have been trying to do various events as i mentioned we did one with the partnership of the state of colorado we have done with many other events with partnership with various stakeholders chambers focusing on key areas of cooperation between both countries like healthcare research aerospace information communication technologies logistics agriculture food processing energy and also ayurveda and uh, well being uh, which also honorable minister is uh, today with us he is also the minister for ayush and there is great potential for that area as well sir we we have a very strong connect between india and this part of united states in that area as well and finally let me again reiterate that the consulate is striving to act as a bridge for you to build the connect with india to build partnerships in different configurations there are several opportunities to go to india and the opportunities are immense you each one of you will need to tailor your own requirement find your own partners and we are there to assist you for this we have resources here we will connect you with ministries and agencies in india and states in india for many of our events various states have come and made presentations india is a big diverse country each state offers its own strength 
So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We will be sharing the slide with our uh, contact details. And I once again uh, thank you, Purnima ji, for giving me this opportunity and uh, for taking this initiative to focus on a very important area in our uh, relationship. And uh, thank you again, sir, for taking out the time. I again thank Honorable Minister for joining us today despite his busy schedule for this event. Thank you. Thank you, Council General, for ongoing support always. And uh, I am so grateful to you for today. Uh, I want to jump in straight to the our minister. I just can't wait to hear him. And uh, I know he may be limited on time, but minister, we do encourage you to stay as long as you can uh, because there are important companies like uh, Bill Blair. I see him on the screen. He is Lockheed Martin India head mm -hmm. and, and, and is an amazing uh, guy who's going to give a very good presentation right after you. Uh, Shripat Nayak ji, uh, first of all, he's a Minister of State. Welcome, sir. Uh, Minister of State for Ayush, which is very important ministry of India. And I'm looking forward to having, after post-COVID, having a trade mission along with you on Ayurveda uh, yes. in Ayush department, partner with you on that, as My. well as for My. defense, because Colorado is host to a lot of defense and aerospace companies, and a couple of them are here today, and some are from out of state too. Our Minister of State for Ayush and Independent Charge and MOS, Defense Government of India, uh, everybody knows him. And I don't have to go into detail because we can take up the entire program to introduce him and an amount of variety of work that he has done, I would like uh, the minister to say highlight some of his um, things that he have done that he's so proud of uh, instead of me saying I feel too small to introduce you sir so I would let you tell us uh, and and for any defense related questions you may have or uh, deals that you want to make honorable minister is the best person representing India in this aspect and he will talk probably about two plus two or uh, other quad countries related new developments that have happened. Uh, and uh, I will just give the floor to him, Minister Nayak. Everybody knows you. Thank you Thank so you. much for accepting and. Go ahead. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Namaskar to everybody. Good morning to all in the United States and good evening to everyone, my dear brothers and sisters joining us from India and USA. I thank Mrs. Purnima Oriya, founder and CEO of National US India Chamber of Commerce, for a very warm welcome and generous introduction. It is a pleasure to be amongst those who value the great friendship between India and the United States, particularly when we have so much good news for defense and defense industry right here in this August forum. It is also true that the government's defense objective go hand in hand with India's economic recovery as we move through the COVID-19 circumstances. The defense and aerospace industry Webinar is a keystone event for us, our so, uh, sovereign partnership. I'm happy to note the presence of our particip participating high tech companies in this forum in well diversified defense portfolios spanning from avionic drones, geo uh, geophysical solutions, robotic trainers and simulators, command and control system, etc. Our alliance with the United States and our relationship brings unique advantages. And webinar like this are a great opportunity to reaffirm and build on this relationship. I wholeheartedly welcome the technology partners present today in this forum through the untiring efforts of Mrs. Purnima Oriya to bring the best 
of technological resources from US to India and vice versa for bilateral trade between the two giant democracies of the world. I also want to acknowledge the Council General of India in Houston, Honorable Asim Mah Minority Business Development Agency of United States. <coughs> The global that is uh, dire uh, director of program CARES Act, Mr. Marvin Lemenji, Global Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Jeff Kampozzi, Lockheed Martin India's Vice President and Chief Executive, William Blairji, Silent Falcon, Technology President and CEO, Mr. Grant Bishopji, Juniper, Unmanned founder and CEO, Mr. Jeff Kozarji. Unmanned experts, INC CEO, Mr. Kevin Gambolji. And Geotech president and CEO, Mr. Jeff Popilji. United States and India have shared common value and principle in promoting the global security, stability, and prosperity. These are not only showcased through the close bilateral ties, but also through trade, investment, and connectivity. The US-India defense relationship has expanded significantly over the past decade, with India conducting more military exercises with the United States, among other collaboratives. The bilateral defense relationship has also progressed from a exclusively buyer-seller relationship to a partnership focus on co-production, co-development, and technology collaboration. Under Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modiji's leadership, India is building a robust defense manufacturing base, and U.S. companies will be important partner as India connects with the global aerospace and defense supply chain. For joint opportunity between US and India, major topics of discussion should be include defense offset, defense procurement procedure, indigenous content development, foreign direct investment in the defense sector, critical defense technology transfer, flexibility in standard DPP con contracts, intellectual property rights, ease of doing business, the strategic partnership model, defense industrial corridor and the linking of make in India to the creation of defense manufacturing ecosystem in India. I'm happy once, once again to note presence of our participating high tech companies in this forum in well di diversified defense portfolios spanning from avionics, drones, geophysical solutions, robotic, trainers and simulators, command and control system, and wish the very best for the success of this webinar and invites all of you to India post COVID-19 to bring your technologies for trade, investment, joint venture, partnership, and opportunities. I can assure you the full support of my ministry for your business deed. With these words, I once again thank you all for joining this program. And uh, uh, given that this opportunity to join this webinar also, thank you very much. Jai. Thank you, Sripadji. Let me just tell you that Sripadji is an Indian politician and the Union Minister of State Independent Charge in the Ministry of Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha, and Homeopathy. And Minister of Defense, he was former Union Minister of State of Health and Family mm -hmm. Welfare. And I'm saying this so that now, so that you don't forget that Sripad Naikji is the person uh, in India representing all of us and also representing Indian companies to us. And his support, without that, we cannot do much in India. So I'm so grateful to you for being there. And, and now I will um, request you to stay on if you can, please. 
because I would give all the speakers one minute to just introduce themselves, starting with Bill Blair, Lockheed Martin, and on his experience of doing business with India, with the two JVs, how is Lockheed Martin pos positioned for the future? What is Lockheed Martin's outlook on the recently released defense acquisition procedure 2020 by the Ministry of Defense in India? And with the Indian space market opening up and currently booming, what is Lockheed Martin's plan to enter this market? If you would address those things, uh, Bill, uh, with that, I give you a warm welcome. Namaste. Please introduce yourself. Namaste. No, thank you very much, uh, Purnima and, and uh, Honorable Consul General and, and uh, Excellency, your Minister of State for Defense. It's great to, to meet you over this virtual platform. I think we've all become experts at it now. Uh, for me, uh, just quick introduction. I, I first went to India in 1996 uh, for a six-month assignment, and I've been going back every decade, uh, so in three years in a role in commercial and defense. Uh, back in the 2000s and then uh, 2010 onwards uh, in defense. And, and so my comments are, are through, through the lens or the perspective of my experience over the last few decades. Um, I think the, the opportunity now is, is uh, incredible, uh, to be honest with you, in terms of where we've come in the bilateral U.S.-India relationship broadly. It's strategic, it's, it's dynamic, it it's, uh, has a lot of depth. Uh, defense is a really important pillar uh, in that relationship. And, and from Lockheed Martin's perspective, uh, I represent Lockheed Martin in India. Um, Lockheed Martin, even before I joined the company, uh, was always seen as a leader uh, in establishing a joint venture now over a decade ago uh, with Tata. The first one in um, aerostructures for C-130J empanages, and the second uh, with uh, Sikorsky. We acquired Sikorsky uh, later, uh, but they established a joint venture in helicopter cabins and components in the same time frame. So uh, I know I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to try to capture a response to your question in two words for each, each one. In terms of our experience of doing business in India um, and how we're positioned, it's two words. One, foundation, and two, future. Uh, the foundation is incredible, uh, very strong. Uh, we've delivered over 100, 100, 130 C-130J empanages, over 154 S-92 cabins. And in both cases, in the first case, well before there was a requirement for us to deliver C-130Js uh, in India. Now we have 12 operating with the Indian Air Force. And so why do I make that point? We, we pursued it out of opportunity, not obligation, through offsets. And the business case made sense. The quality, the capability, uh, and the cost leverage uh, were all advantages. Um, and we've just built, starting to build S-16 wings, fighter wings in India. We don't have the formal requirement yet for the multi-role fighter aircraft. We're, we're doing that because out of opportunity, not obligation. Um, and then helicopters. We're positioned now. The MH60 Romeo was selected earlier this year. Uh, 24 helicopters, the best capability, um, delivering uh, ASW, anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface capability that was absolutely critical for the Indian Navy, but also collaborates with the other navies and the Quad, U.S., India, Japan and Australia that operate with the same capability and can provide some interoperability. Um, so, so that ties into the future. You know, through our joint ventures and directly through our supply chain, we've engaged over 240 suppliers. <coughs> so over the last decade, it's really built up an ecosystem of aerospace and defense companies, many of which had been operating for well over a decade in the automotive sector and saw it strategic to go into defense. And I think there's a lot of positive lessons to be learned from that. We uh, have over 1,000 employees. We've exported over $600 million of exports in the last decade. Uh, and it's notable, uh, since this is U.S. and India, um, U.S., I think, is up around uh, over 20% of uh, defense exports over the last three or four years. Um, and, you know, you compare that to maybe 12% for France and single digits for Israel and Russia. And so why do I say that? Uh, I think U.S. companies have seen the opportunity made the investments, found the partners, and the partners are absolutely key. Um, you asked about uh, the recently uh, released Defense Acquisition Procedure 2020. Uh, one, I will say and applaud uh, the government of India and the Ministry of Defense for the outreach and the collaboration and the engagement to see, comment, and make uh, positive changes to that policy. We have now up to 74% foreign direct investment. 
Um, we have uh, the opportunity for leasing, and you're starting to see some cases move forward uh, in unmanned air systems. Uh, transfer of technology, I think, it hopefully is going to be easier to implement. It's been difficult for us to bring our best capabilities under the offset model. We've done it independent of offsets. Uh, and then some acquisition changes. Buy Global Make in India, you'll hear more about that. That allows an, a company like uh, Lockheed Martin to establish, a, say, a 74 uh, percent entity and actually take the lead with Indian partners to meet Indian requirements also while we grow exports, which is a win-win. And then uh, for many companies, I think on this webinar, uh, startups, uh, the IDEX uh, component, the connection in with Indian startups and the ability to um, you know, both leverage that through offsets, but also find a way to leverage that in through the defense acquisition procedure, I think brings a level of diversity uh, to companies in India and companies in US that can partner effect effectively and then life cycle costs. For companies like us, Lockheed Martin in India, it levels the playing field. Uh, we, we deliver capability. It may not be the lowest acquisition cost up front, but it is the most capable uh, uh, system capability that, we can that, that can be delivered globally, MH60 Romeo is an example, and also de deliver over the life cycle cost advantages. And that truly levels the playing field. I think the challenge is uh, implementation. You know, we, we, we have some great provisions, but, you know, it's not implemented until you're selected under this now current defense acquisition procedure. We have to achieve up to 50 percent indigenous content, and um, that's going to translate to some challenges for us. It relates to our tier one companies that um, need to look to India for partners, um, because that's going to be incredibly important for market access. Um, and and cost competitiveness. And then raw material, tremendous strategic opportunity in any country that's invested in defense. The raw material component is a key element of that and typically uh, grows through public private partnership. Last you asked, it's opening up uh, in, in a very dynamic way. Uh, like, like previously the power sector and the defense sector uh, commercial aviation. Uh, now the space market is open up, opening up. Traditionally, everything channeled through ISRO. Um, we 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 are engaging with ISRO, and 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 there are some great opportunities there. They have ongoing work between ISRO and NASA that we can, if you think underpin, if you will, as uh, companies. Uh, our Lucky Martin Space Business, as you know, is uh, based in Denver. That's where I came from, and to this role into India. I think there's tremendous opportunities. And the two words I would cite would be collaboration and capability. Um, great opportunities now for collaboration because the policy supports it. I think there's an evolving uh, 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 component in the government and defense element, which is growing with the Defense Space Agency, in addition to the commercial and civil sector. I think it's a tremendous opportunity for startups. We have a, a lot of startups in the Denver area that I'm familiar with. Um, and and India is number two in the world in terms of uh, startups and maybe growing uh, fastest in terms of uh, innovation. It's the global innovation hub of most of the companies that we interface with in the U.S. Uh, that are critical to our technology development. So I just think there's tremendous opportunities there in the space domain. It's uh, foundational and it's also uh, platform uh, launch uh, systems, uh, mission systems. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of opportunities to tap into the the innovation in artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, um, and uh, quantum computing, which uh, is a tremendous uh, you know leverage point for many companies today in India. Some of the companies you cited up front. So with that, I know I went a little bit longer. My apologies if I have to leave a little bit earlier than the end because uh, we have a global leaders meeting that I'm I'm speaking at as well or participating at. Pardon me. So, um, but thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate you making time because I know that you have that global board meeting and I kind of twisted your arm to just be here just for a few minutes. I am so grateful and thankful to you for uh, for uh, acknowledging and supporting our event today. Uh, Lockheed Martin is very important to us and I would like to see La Lockheed Martin do some Rafael deals. You have the capability, so the minister is right here. So I, I would say follow up and have a drink with him. <laughs> uh, next, I would like to invite Grant Bishop to introduce himself, please. Hello there. Thank you, Your Excellency Minister Nayak and the Honorable Asim Mahajan. 
Uh, I want to say thank you to Bill Blair as well, uh, Lockheed Martin team. My aviation journey started as a U.S. Air Force fighter pilot flying the Lockheed Martin F-16 in peace and combat. Lockheed Martin makes a great product, always got me there on time and on target and brought me home. Uh, after the Air Force, I uh, developed a number of airport safety system technologies and runway for runways to include fog detection and the ability to repair runways under combat conditions with robotics. Uh, today, I now lead Silent Falcon. We're a spinoff from Bi Aerospace, which is a, another Colorado company. Uh, we provide our customers with high fidelity data visualization and predictive analytics of their infrastructure systems. We are an entirely organic uh, one-stop shop in which we provide not only data collection, but to, to the visualization part in hours. We capture the data with aircraft that we design and build. We fly with our professionally rated pilots from the commercial airline industry and the military. Our software team processes the data with our proprietary AI software, which results in a high fidelity, seamless solution. The resulting information typically provides a 30 to 60% uh, cost savings in infrastructure maintenance and extended longevity. I also wanted to say uh, thank you to Marvin and Pranima. The timing of this event is excellent. Uh, the United States is excited that our first female woman vice president will be of Indian American descent. And we expect the Biden administration will continue strengthening the economic and defense ties between our two great democracies. President-elect Biden has already indicated that he looks forward to strengthening the long-standing relationship and ties to India and its people. And uh, we see a very exciting future for our company and, and all those on the call. Thank you so much, Grant, uh, President and CEO of Silent Falcon UAS Technology. I look forward to taking you to India. Next, I would invite Jeff Kosar, founder and CEO of Juniper, Unmanned. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff Cozart. Unmute yourself, please. We cannot hear you. Unmute. Unmute yourself, Jeff. Jeff. We cannot hear you, cannot hear you. Unmute. Uh, we need to help him, Marvin. Uh, his microphone is off. Unmute your microphone, Jeff. Marvin, can you help him? I'm working on it. Okay. Or I could just call him real quick. Why don't we go to the next presenter and we'll come back okay. to Jeff. Okay, so next is um, Kevin Gambold, and he is uh, going to go ahead and give his um, intro. And Kevin is the CEO of Unmanned Experts Inc. Go ahead, Kevin. Hello, good morning and good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Marvelous, marvelous. And uh, I can't tell the slides on. Are the slides up? Yes. There you go. Wonderful work. We'll only run through the first couple. So, uh, namaste. Thank you, everyone, for uh, this opportunity to speak and uh, to gather these two great nations together. My name is Kevin Gambold. I'm the CEO of a technology company in Colorado called Unmanned Experts, or UMEX. Our byline is confidence at the cutting edge. We are predominantly working in the manned, unmanned aircraft integration niche. That's uh, unmanned traffic management, swarms, advanced air mobility, and vehicle to vehicle um, technologies. We specialize in software, hardware, and flight test and evaluation. As a company, we are looking for partnership opportunities, um, examples outsourcing coding or manufacturing of uh, any of the end products. We currently have a we currently have a 3D printing arrangement with a firm in the UK, which we're willing to move, 
And we're working with a company in India right now on some SEO efforts. We're also willing to establish and have looked at this before a UMEX India, um, like an expansion of the UMEX model that we have over here under some sort of licensing agreement. Um, and we've, we've actually worked with uh, Indian partners before a couple of years ago uh, along the same lines. In addition, as a company, we're looking for support and finance for operationalizing and putting into production some of our lines of development. And we're actively searching for channel partners to introduce um, our products into other markets. With that, uh, I thank you all for your time. And if you have any questions, I'm Matt Expert. Great. Uh, that was a great intro on your company, and I'm sure some of the Indian companies watching would be very, very uh, excited to work with you. Jeff Kozart, let's try you again. I still see your mic is muted. Could you click on that and maybe that will help unmute. For some reason, we can't get him. So uh, let me move on to the next speaker and Jeff will try to help you fix uh, the issue there. Uh, Jeff Popiel, President and CEO of Geotech. Jeff? Yes, hi. Can Go you ahead. hear me? Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you uh, for uh, inviting us to join. I'm Jeff Popiel with Geotech Environmental Equipment. We also have a division called Leptron Unmanned Aircraft. Uh, for background, Geotech is a manufacturing company, primarily in the ground and surface water sampling and remediation space. So our venture into the drone industry started in uh, 2009 through 11 in doing some contract manufacturing work. And then in 2015, we acquired Leptron uh, Unmanned Aircraft and we uh, started manufacturing in an ISO environment, um, equipment, uh, aircraft, small aircraft with uh, US uh, military grade autopilots in them. So uh, the same autopilots that would be in a, like a Predator type drone would be in some of the aircraft we make. So that, that's what we make for the, like the US Army and uh, police fire search rescue where the components in the electronics avionics need to be uh, US made and military grade. And then on the environmental side, Geotech focuses on how do we use unmanned aircraft to protect the environment and make jobs safer. And so that's our core philosophy of what we do and the equipment we manufacture. And we also help and support uh, several of the other US drone manufacturing companies with sensor and gimbal integration, manufacturing of components, and or in some cases their entire uh, product line. So first and foremost, we're a, we're a small manufacturing company. And um, just as a point of interest on the call, we have started to diversify our supply chain and we're now sourcing a lot of our metal um, rock components that we use in our manufacturing processes to or from from India instead of uh, other not to be named Asian countries. That, and that's that's really it for Ama. Let's try Jeff again. Jeff Kozart. Uh, yes, are you able to hear me I now? See you yes. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me uh, on the call. I'd like to introduce uh, you to uh, Juniper Unmanned. We are uh, an operator of unmanned aircraft, uh, but uh, for the purposes of uh, infrastructure management. And so it's the total life cycle management of, uh, of infrastructure. So that's roads and highways and bridges and, uh, and, um, and electric uh, utility lines and uh, power poles and, uh, and then uh, oil and gas as well. Uh, so anywhere where we have physical infrastructure that needs to be maintained, our process is to uh, identify a business problem and then ultimately uh, to utilize remote sensing technologies uh, to change the way that that, that asset is being managed. 
uh, to automate it. And uh, so our, our, uh, we are using uh, uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence uh, to, uh, to analyze the, uh, the data uh, and then uh, ultimately to deliver uh, solutions. Uh, we work with the, the Colorado Department of Transportation uh, identifying things uh, like uh, where rockfall is likely to uh, happen uh, on the roadways and uh, create damages or hazards uh, to the roadways. Uh, we also do a lot of work with the uh, uh, electric uh, utilities, uh, identifying maintenance issues and um, and uh, helping them uh, to ultimately manage the um, the uh, reliability of the electrical grid. Uh, and uh, again, I say thank you so much for having me on the call. I'm um, uh, really uh, excited to be uh, you know, to have the opportunity, and uh, thank you, Pranima, for setting it up. Sure, Jeff, I would love to work with you and take you to India. You look nice in that suit. Uh, and sorry for the trouble you had in joining us. By the way, um, I, have, I have a very important person that I want to introduce who's a great friend, a great partner, Global Chamber of Commerce President Jeff Cam Campos. He, they, have, uh, they are present in 183 countries, you won't believe, and um, multiple offices. Take it over. Thank you, Pranima, and uh, thanks for the kind introduction. And uh, I guess I'm one of many Jeffs here. We have quite a few here. And uh, so it's usually not the case with the world name Jeff. So, but thank you for being here. I appreciate being here. And uh, I uh, wanted to just give you a little overview of Global Chamber. Uh, you know, we've adapted to the current norm. Uh, Global Chamber is a one of a kind virtual and growing community of CEOs, executives, and leaders uh, in 525 regions around the world. And we're focused on helping companies grow in more than just one metro area. We're the only organization in the world with hundreds of locations that help executives grow their companies through warm connections and a variety of virtual services that we offer today. Uh, we currently have an office uh, in, in Mumbai, India. And uh, most recently, we did a global expo in India uh, in September of 2020. So we, we definitely look at India as a market for us. Uh, we look to continue to grow those relationships. And uh, I'm located in, in Denver. I also manage the office in Chicago. So I have a couple of locations that I oversee. But the advantage I have is that I know Pranima. And for us to grow in India, between US and, and, and India, Pranima is definitely a good partner for me to uh, Put together. We've worked over the years and will continue to work. And she mentions the trip out there. We're looking to definitely be part of that trip and look for continued opportunities between our countries. And I'm excited about the future uh, with businesses in our in our uh, respective in the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. This is so great to know about your chamber and to be able to partner MBDA and. Uh, and Global Chamber is going to continue to do events together. Um, and our next one will be on MSMEs. Uh, and hopefully we'll get the Minister of MSME from India for that one. Um, yeah. uh, and we look forward to doing that in January. I am very excited, Jeff, to partner with you for trade mission to India, along with MBDA, of course, with under the guidance of our Council General of India. And uh, I know that the, our Defense Minister who's here would be excited to host you in New Delhi. So we look forward, forward to, that. to that. And just so everyone knows that Defense Department has a procurement list. One of the list is exactly the companies we have um, uh, invited today, which is anti-drone technology, the mapping and what have you. And so be excited about India. Any questions, the Council General, myself, the Defense Ministry, um, and the minister himself said that he's going to be total support for us. Um, so we are going to now go ahead and start with the question answer session. Always continue to look for the defense procurement list. And if not, I will be able to provide you with the help of Council General. And we'll continue to tell you what the needs of India are so that whenever it fits the need of your company, uh, we would like to take you to India. Most of you yesterday had called me and said, how are we going to engage with India? And after this webinar, we'll talk about exactly that. 
I do see one of the former Colonel N.P. Singh on. Uh, so we have some uh, people from Defense Department. We have some colonels. We have a lot of people from India joining us, even the companies like Aquis in Belgaum. So there are people that do want to partner with you. So my first question goes to Jeff Kozar. What plan does India have for developing infrastructure, roads, power, water, energy over the next 10 years? Jeff, you want to talk about that? Or you want that, that question to uh, to the Council General? Council General, maybe you can mute yourself and please uh, let Jeff know question. So the, to you, Council General. Please, uh, if you didn't hear me, let me repeat the question. What plan does India have for developing infrastructure, roads, power, water, energy over the next 10 years? And Jeff Kozart wanted to know about it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that question, Purnimaji. I, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning of uh, my remarks, we have uh, different verticals or in our policy infrastructure uh, is a big area, which is uh, obviously when you talk of infrastructure, you talk of roads, highways, bridges. We have the PPP model. We have a public private partnership. We have uh, build own uh, transfer. And uh, there are many different strands of this. As you yourself know, we have been trying to build the connect between India and United States in this area of infrastructure logistics also. We have recently, you know, uh, done a couple of events with the NIIF, which is the National uh, Infrastructure Investment Fund in India, which uh, offers great opportunities for investments in India. They are uh, investing in particular projects which have been identified, which are viable. So to answer this question, I mean, I obviously we don't have the benefit of time now, but uh, the short answer is that I will be happy to connect with Jeff share with him the recent uh, policies in this regard, the various options to go forward on this. And given the diversity of India, the large number of states, there are several infrastructure projects, depending on the area where you want to go, uh, the sector you want to go, the field you want to focus on. Uh, we focus on energy here in Southern United States and in Houston. So energy, for example, the energy infrastructure itself is a big huge area. We are trying to build uh, smart natural grids uh, or gas uh, grids. And uh, that is uh, one area where we have a lot of information available with us. So I will share on this chat feature our contact details and I will be more than happy to go and delve much deeper into this vast area with Jeff, focusing on what his area of interest is, connecting him to the right partners in India, the right agencies in India. and getting him all the details required for uh, for uh, answering this question and also the information which he's uh, seeking i had also mentioned in the beginning obviously these you know we are focusing on uh, defense and aerospace today but this is also a very vast area so while uh, we have had very good experience sharing by companies who are already shared their experience this becomes a very valuable as asset for companies who are based here in united states because these are the people who share how they have gone, how they have uh, built successful companies. The second theme, of course, uh, many people have highlighted is about technology and uh, technology transfer, as I mentioned, is a big area under our defense partnership also, where we can build uh, long-term strategic partnerships for global equipment manufacturers. So I think I will leave it at that, but uh, again, highlight that please uh, write to us individually and we will delve much deeper into whatever your area of interest is and take it forward. Thank you so much, Council General, for that impromptu answer. I know I didn't send it to you ahead of time, but we wanted to keep it a little interesting. Not so at thank all you either. so much. You, wonderful, you brilliantly answered our question. And another question that, uh, that comes is from Kevin Gambold. And he's asking that what are the ITR considerations with your work? So, Kevin, this question is for you. With your work, with your company. Please, Kevin. Kevin Gambold. 
Are you still there? Kevin? I think we have lost Kevin for the moment. Uh, he has left for whatever reason. Uh, maybe he'll jump, jump back in. But there were some things he wanted to ask. And so, um, Bill, I know that you said uh, you are still there. And I know you said in, in a quick way, but I want to pose one question to you one more time that with the Indian space market opening up currently and currently booming, what is Lockheed Martin's uh, what is Lockheed Martin's plan to enter the market? But also, how will you engage some of the minority businesses that are here, which is 7.8 million to be precise? Um, are they going to be helped by companies like Lockheed Martin? Uh, with opportunities opening up for minority business enterprises of United States. Bill, are you there? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the question. If you could uh, say that again. Your please. question was that, you know, with the India market currently booming, what is Lockheed Martin's plan to enter this market? And will you benefit or will MBEs of United States, the 7.8 million minority businesses of US, are they going to benefit from these opportunities? Because I know that 20% of the work, majority of the companies give to minority business enterprises. And since we have MBDA listeners, companies that are listening, we want to know a little bit about how minority businesses can participate with Lockheed Martin. You yeah, know, it's a great question. You know, I think it's it's by working through our global supply chain um, directly. And so think of Lockheed Martin um, as a company that's established, you know, platforms uh, uh, that uh, companies that we're working with. Think of that as a platform of a connection, but also the platforms we're delivering capability. And so um, we're on that we've established uh, relationships with over 240 suppliers, so a defense and aerospace ecosystem feeding into our joint venture, plus over 70 suppliers. So we had a, a virtual supplier conference earlier this year. Uh, uh, we planned for it before the, the pandemic, but it became a necessity. Very effective to make those connections. And so I, I think the where we can be a player is, is being a bridge to those connections. We really need companies, our tier one, tier two suppliers, partners to make those connections in India. In order to achieve the 50% uh, indigenous content requirement uh, now going forward under the defense acquisition procedure. So um, I, I think we can be a bridge, uh, just as the Consul General said, uh, you know, I think as a company, on a company company basis, in addition to the government support and government to government con contacts and connections, um, we can help be that bridge through our global supply chain. And uh, we, we, we are working with, you know, most of the 240 companies in India are uh, MSMEs. And, yes. um, and we can make those connections uh, where we need to for some of the, uh, the companies that you're mentioning that would like to see some relationship or partnership uh, with, with companies in India to grow their business. And I think we can help be a conduit or uh, bridging uh, those connections. All right, that is excellent. That is very encouraging to the 7.8 million minority businesses, a trillion dollar economy of United States. And of course, India's majority of the companies are uh, minority business enterprises. And I think they will very much want to do business with you and with Lockheed Martin. Uh, my next question is to Grant Bishop. And going back to the private sector, US and India have had some tension concerning intellectual property. Have you or your businesses navigated this issue? And do you have advice for US businesses looking to do trade with India? Sure, thank you for the question. Uh, one of the th things that we've done is as we've built our product, we always look at the intellectual property and we always look at uh, where we can allow the uh, product to be uh, sold and flown. And uh, we've made all of our products ITAR um, unlimited, so they can go anywhere essentially. Um, so that opens up many opportunities with us in India. 
the um, the challenge on intellectual property is that uh, I think no matter what you write down on a piece of paper, it's always about the bond that you have with the company you deal with. And that's why it's so important that when you first meet companies, especially international, that you have an agreement that uh, you know that you're going to work well together. Each company wants to do well and each one can participate in in new technologies as well as as sharing and building together and and so in the in the times i've done it over the last 15 years internationally um, as long as there's uh, agreements in place and everybody understands they're essentially staying in their lane and not trying to take from the other company and having an unfair advantage everything goes well so i i have not had uh, any challenges, and I've dealt with a, a number of countries overseas, and especially with software as well as uh, various ITAR uh, limited uh, products. So um, I, I personally have not experienced any challenges with it, and I think that if you have two great companies working together and working as a team and not adversaries, everything goes fine. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, that was very helpful to know. Now, Jeff, I want to ask you a question. In the US, there are no shortages of Chamber of Commerce. How does Global Chamber differ from other traditional US Chamber of Commerce? Yes. Yeah. yeah, can you repeat that one more time? Yes. In the US, there are no shortages of Chamber of Commerce, as you know. How does Global Chamber of Commerce differ from traditional US Chamber of Commerce? Yes, Pranima, thank you for that question. Uh, Global Chamber is unique in its way that we are located in over 500 cities across the globe. Uh, we, but we, we have our own cities that we work with. For example, I manage the Denver and the Chicago offices. We have our own board of directors. We have our, we've created our own network within that city. And the unique part of what we offer is that we collaborate with all the other cities. So for example, we do uh, an event, uh, a con we have a, uh, a committee called the Council of Opportunities. We, companies present from all over, the, all over the globe and talk about opportunities. And that's where we create those collaborations. Uh, and that's what makes unique is that we've, we're developing this network and our contacts are 40,000. Mm -hmm. in our reach so you could see we, that's unique part of what we offer is the collaboration that's not only local which is strong but also global thank you jeff thank you that is so great to know that you have forty let let's take them to india on a trade <laughs> mission i wouldn't take all forty thousand, but maybe 40. it's that's still about one percent and uh, so the next question goes to um, jeff popel with COVID-19 impacting the worldwide community, can you speak on economic indicators that point to the international trade as a method of recovery and how, and also long-term sustainability? So, Jeff Popiel. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I put a, a mask on here that we're actually manufacturing uh, in our plant to respond to COVID. It's uh, based on a Japanese origami, uh, pattern. So mm -hmm. it's a reusable, washable N95 mask. So uh, when you talk about the uh, crisis presenting opportunity, manufacturing uh, those masks here um, in our plant, and there could be opportunities to make them in other countries for for sure. We cannot make them in Denver and, and sell them to India, but there could be a need to make a, a really unique mask that uh, is more efficient on the materials and provides protection uh, for a partner in India for that. Also, we've adapted our uh, standard ground and surface water sampling and monitoring equipment. And we're now um, making a uh, pump to sample sewage. So if you hear in the news, they, they test uh, uh, sewage water for uh, COVID-19. And so we're a device that can be deployed on university campuses around the world to try to keep students safe when they're still in that campus environment. Um, and then uh, oddly for us this year, um, and I, I don't know if there's a COVID indicator or if it's just the luck of the draw, but our our exports are up and um, 
I think part of that related in the opportunity is events that you you're organizing like this, where we would traditionally think of needing to travel to get into per, to be in person to meet one another. Well, we're doing several virtual trips a day uh, to meet people around the world to start that process. We hope to travel and meet again in person in the future, but uh, we're able to identify and find new vendors like we we mentioned. I mentioned earlier on the call, we're bringing in uh, raw material from India now where beforehand um, we, were, we were not doing so, but that, that spurred not due to COVID, but due to uh, taxes on our imports where we diversified our supply chain. Um, but because of COVID, we were able to get in touch on video, take a virtual plant tour of an Indian plant to then identify a manufacturer that could meet our needs and bring product in. So I think the COVID's creating, a, it's making us closer through the technology, I, I guess would be the a short answer to your question. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, you know, congratulations for doing this. This is the human element that your company is bringing. We all talk about the fifth industrial revolution and we talk about humanity and humanitarian touch is what is going to drive the fifth industrial revolution. And human element is going to be very important. And your company exhibiting that, I, I want to applaud you for that. This is Thank excellent you. that uh, your company is doing the mass and and helping others and that is exactly uh, what the future is in the 21st century i would like to gear my next question to the council general of india since we have him i want to take full advantage of his expertise and presence can you talk about current initiatives your office is working on to enhance the trade relationship between india and the u.s council general uh, thank you again, Purnima ji. We, we have uh, multiple initiatives going on. You know, let me, I, I have mentioned earlier, let me first uh, mention about the environment of our relationship. I, I have highlighted earlier, but even I would uh, not hesitate to repeat it again, that India and United States, given that we are multicultural societies, vibrant democracies, we have shared values. There are a lot of complementarities and we are natural partners. And I think that is a very important uh, element or to build a very meaningful uh, and fruitful relationship. There is great deal of desire on both sides. We have uh, in political engagement at the highest level. The depth and breadth of our comprehensive strategic partnership is very wide. We have pillars like uh, energy, security, technology, but also trade and investment, growing people to people contact, a very vibrant Indian diaspora here. And uh, so, what I want to highlight is the depth and breadth of this relationship, which offers a great opportunity for any company to look into India. The second aspect of India, which I want to highlight is, uh, you know, we, we are proud of our institutions. India offers a very stable environment. We are reliable partners. That is another uh, big uh, thing, which I know that the American companies value. We are reliable, stable partners and we have, very strong institutions. We have a rule of law and a very independent judiciary and all arms of our government. Second, the, another aspect which I would want to highlight is the ease of doing business. Yes. Over the last years, and many of you who are based in India are already aware of the diversity and the breadth of India. If you go from south to north, India and east to west, you know, India is a big subcontinent, as we say, it's a country of 1.3 billion people. Our demographics is something which you should definitely look at. We are amongst the youngest countries in the world. Uh, the average age of India will only be 29 by the year 2025. We have 400 million people below the age of 15. One of the fastest growing economies, a huge domestic market, a, a market which offers opportunities as a base for exporting to Middle East, to Africa, to United States. So the opportunities are huge and uh, immense. We have initiatives going on with very various chambers, chambers like you and many other chambers and partners, including in United States and in India. We have initiatives going on with states in India. You, if you recall, Karnataka had participated with the state of Colorado. Karnataka also is home to some uh, US companies, big, large corporations who are who have data centers there in cities like Bangalore, but also 
who have manufacturing bases in aerospace and defense there. So that is one strand of initiatives where we are uh, partnering with states. We have done events with Arkansas. We have done with uh, Colorado. We are doing an upcoming event with the state of New Mexico, with Oklahoma. We have done one with Texas. So we are doing in different configurations and geometries with different partners, focusing on uh, sectors like healthcare, medical research, energy, which is again a very big connect for this part of United States, aerospace, defense. On aerospace and defense also, I would like to highlight since uh, we have the benefit of uh, such good uh, representatives from various companies today, we have planned events through the year next year as well. We have a calendar of sector focused events and uh, events with the different partners. So in terms of initiatives, we are also working on, you earlier asked me about infrastructure. So the National Inf Investment and Infrastructure Fund, they, they, we have presentations we can share on that and many American um, pension funds and investors are actively looking into that because there are huge opportunities there. Our infrastructure is really being scaled up. So I really for you know don't have the time to go into each area and sector, but I would definitely say that uh, you know depending on your interest, we we will connect with you, we will offer you all support and uh, partner with you. Please don't hesitate to use our resources, and I yes. continue to highlight that that people who are looking for basic information, how to set up an office in India, which is the agency to reach out to. Of course, uh, today you have many companies who are already present there. They are aware of our regulatory framework. They are aware of the agencies in India. But chambers like yours, which uh, try to promote trade and investment between both countries, also offer an opportunity for many people who are trying to explore. And I would highlight this more for the medium and small-sized companies because they don't have the time and resources to individually go. We we hope this pandemic will be over soon. We will mount delegations. And even during this last couple of months, a lot of FDI has flown into India. If you see the latest figures, US, a lot of foreign direct investment from United States uh, has flowed into India. A lot of partnerships have been built during this period. Technology, which is represented by companies here, is a huge area of cooperation between both countries, advanced manufacturing, information, communication technologies, biosciences. While I have been here in the last year or so, I was in Geneva earlier in the World Trade Organization. That was also an environment where we were, you know, doing hardcore trade negotiations. But since I have been here, I have witnessed that a lot of small and big companies have built partnerships. They have taken the stride forward. They have uh, invested in different states in India. And uh, even despite the constraints of the pandemic over uh, virtually like we are connecting today, they have uh, actually managed to partner in many of technology and uh, innovation. So we have a full roadmap and uh, our, we will put out our slide for please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Even for this webinar, we have uh, some basic documents which uh, obviously you people have accessed already, but uh, something giving a broad overview of the policy support and incentives of the opportunity of investment in the defense industry sector in India, the recent policy changes. Honorable Minister has already highlighted and uh, again highlighting about the defense uh, manufacturing dedicated investor cell. I think that should be your first port of call. You should uh, definitely reach out to them the kind of technologies we are seeking, the kind of opportunities which are there, the industrial corridors in Tamil Nadu and uh, Uttar Pradesh, they are dedicated defense uh, manufacturing corridors. Companies in India are also seeking partners. So the, so the challenge and this I you know, tell everyone is the challenge is to actually connect people. Once you connect companies, you connect people, they take it forward themselves. And that is where we come in and chambers come in. So, so I think, uh, again, the opportunities are immense and let us work together to harness this immense potential. I have Thank you again for this opportunity. I have one more quick question, please. Uh, balancing foreign relations can be rather difficult. What can U.S. companies do different to improve opportunities for garnering business with the government of India? So, Purnima ji, I have already taken, I think, time from such uh, speakers who are so busy and valuable, but I would still venture to answer this. Uh, of course, not differently, but I have already mentioned that U.S. companies have a 
uh, first movers advantage store to say because they already more than 2000 companies are present in india they are growing the number is growing what they can do differently of course is to highlight the huge uh, areas of opportunities to work together and uh, to to basically whether you know the decision is ours whether we want to continue to make these incremental steps or take giant leaps forward and i think that it is this is the time to take these big leaps our honorable prime minister has connected in uh, with in united states over the last 3 uh, 4 months in different uh, forums including during in the recent energy dialogue and uh, even earlier so uh, i i think what the time and opportunity is now india is i would definitely say at an inflection point which uh, ease of doing business has improved rapidly the green shoots are now of recovery are visible after this pandemic also so the coming years offer exciting opportunities and uh, to put it uh, you know briefly i think the best in india us relationship is yet to come so they they should uh, continue to work together and also uh, lastly of course uh, companies who are present here who are already present in india should at least share experience and uh, try to connect with companies who are trying to find avenues and opportunities in india of what are uh, you know how to work in india and definitely uh, try to explore these immense opportunities thank you so much and kevin we saw your hand up i would like to ask you a question and then you can also talk about what's on your mind what is your approach to outsourcing work overseas kevin Kevin Gamble. Hi, apologies. I'm having all sorts of Wi-Fi issues, so we're back on the phone as a backup. Uh, thanks, you, patience. This has been superb, by the way, and uh, very informative. Um, yeah, obviously, a, a lot of the people here working in the unmanned space, and I know we've talked about the ITAR issue concerning. Um, you know, I, ITAR is a pretty rigid um, restriction for the U.S. companies operating overseas. that's why i like this level of engagement because i think we can work through itar issues when we're at, you know ambassadorial and um and, you know council general level so no um i found indian companies to be very um forward leaning in terms of partnerships and we work with a number of them actually i'm still in touch with one chap in facebook that we that started a a branch of our company or you know a, an offshoot of it probably 8 years ago um so uh, uh, but it is notoriously difficult to get a relationship established in india and with uh, and it's not through a lack of trying so i think this council and panima's efforts are superb and i'm very excited to be a part of it uh, it's just the next step that's what i'm interested in it is getting from this amazing conference to shaking hands trading you know ideas trading some money and getting some product out the door that's my next question what is the next step well the next step is to continue to talk to the chamber and to the council general's office to engage in a meaningful meaningful partnership viewers today that are ready with the companies in india we invited a lot of uh, companies from india in the defense sector so we will be uh, reaching out to you uh, afterwards kevin and i just wanted to see if uh, if uh, bill blair is still there uh, our chief innovation fellow jason nagi for the national us india chamber of commerce has a question would like to hear about lockheed martin civilian non defense engagement activities and pursuits in india so that's a question for bill blair if he's not there we'll move on and ask the uh, next question and uh, hopefully jeff kozart is there i would like to ask him what is the advantages to you about working with businesses based in us rather than on in addition to companies already doing work in india and what's the best way to collaborate uh, with indian companies you wanted to know i think council general answered a lot of those questions jeff um, how what is your company doing to engage with india if at all anything yet or, or in united states as well 
and also maybe with MBEs, how they can benefit from your company engagement. Uh, thank you, Pranima. The um, uh, I, th I think for uh, Juniper Unmanned, the uh, uh, we recognize that uh, there's a vast um, amount of uh, expertise uh, in India that we would like to um, you know tap into. But we're just beginning this journey, and I'm so happy that, that we've made the connection uh, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce because I think there's a lot of work that we can do together. Uh, Juniper Unmanned's very focused. Uh, the artificial intelligence for the management of our physical infrastructure, but a lot of a lot of those capabilities are things that uh, that um, uh, I think India has capable has uh, people that are very uh, that are experts, at, uh, you know, say with geospatial uh, technology and analysis. Uh, so uh, I I think the answer here is that uh, you know it's for us to continue to engage with the chamber uh, to identify the best sources. As you know, a lot of these companies in India will, will make contact with us, but it's very difficult for us to qualify uh, you know, whether or not those are companies that can really help be helpful to us. And I think uh, by facilitating the relationship with, through the chamber, we will uh, be much better uh, able to take advantage of, um, of the skills and capabilities that uh, companies in India can offer to us. And we talked about MBEs participating with various companies. Anyone can take that question and let us know how you are engaging MBEs and uh, how you intend to further help MBEs with what you are doing in, uh, in, in US and also your needs with India. So anyone wants to take that question, please, please feel free to. I guess I'll move on to the next one. Jeff uh, Campos, what adjustments have you seen by clients in this environment? And are you hopeful that trading with other countries will spur continuous growth for US based companies? Jeff, Jeff Campos. Thanks, Pranima. Um, yeah, I, I see opportunities have kind of been from both sides of the sectors uh, and really there's companies that are being very conservative and then there's other companies that are being very aggressive with these current opportunities that exist today so we see from both sides but we still see growth uh, in a lot of different areas uh, i know one thing i we hosted an event with all our economic development people from a lot of different locally in Denver, and they were just talking about the growth that they've been really busy and they've seen opportunities of companies still wanting to come to US and companies wanting to go to other countries. So I, I'm, I feel confident that there's still gonna be growth in the future. It's somewhat conservative, but people are still being, uh, starting to get even more aggressive today. Thank you, thank you very much. Sure. Um, I would like to now uh, ask all the panelists, since we have very few minutes left, to give closing remarks. And anyone can go first. Grant, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I'll just say, first of all, thank you for putting on this event. It's been fantastic. Uh, a lot of uh, great information. Um, and I hope that there are companies out there listening that uh, will give us a call. Uh, we look forward to any opportunities to work directly with either the Indian government or any of the local companies in India that could benefit from uh, our advanced technology products and services. Uh, we have set ourselves up to, uh, to scale internationally, and uh, I would love to start with India. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Popiel. Yeah, hi Prima. Thank you uh, again for organizing the event and uh, highlighting the market opportunity that exists with India. Um, I think initially this year I was thinking of more of a, a place for supplying uh, materials than to export and drive business to, but uh, knowing and hearing where the Indian uh, government and economy is for not just caring uh, for the environment, but uh, its growing population is how, how can we contribute with that from an environmental equipment 
manufacturing perspective and uh, helping to improve um, safety uh, for you know the environmental quality and safety on the job site. So any of the sites where we could participate around mines, refineries, pipelines, um, sites that are in our wheelhouse, we'd, we'd uh, appreciate the opportunity to engage to um, really identify and uh, a partner in India to, to build around. We don't currently have a great partner for our core business and technology, so it'd be great to see if we can identify one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Brent Bishop, next. Final remarks, please. Uh, Brent you want Bishop? Uh, my, uh, I'll just uh, kind of add on to what I said is uh, um, we are looking forward to growth internationally. And I think that all the things that we've heard today have been very um, beneficial to companies like ourselves that focus on infrastructure and providing not only platforms, but the uh, AI and machine learning software to help uh, uh, manage those uh, infrastructure items better and we would love to work with companies locally in India. Thank you. That's excellent. Uh, I would like to now invite Jeff Kozar to give final remarks, please. Uh, thank you. And uh, I will just reiterate that uh, there's some things that have been said but previously that I think there's great opportunities uh, for us to work with India. And I'm grateful uh, to uh, Purnima for helping us uh, you know, navigate this. Um, you know, Juniper on Man is very much uh, committed <clears throat> excuse me, to the management of uh, physical infrastructure, both here in the United States and uh, whatever services we might be able to provide uh, uh, to, uh, to India as uh, you uh, uh, navigate your uh, issues with uh, the development and management of your physical infrastructure. I uh, very, very much appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, be with you. Thank you, Jeff. And likewise, our, our next uh, Final remarks, if Bill Blair is still there. Bill Blair, if you would like to give final remarks. If not, let me go to Kevin. Um, Kevin Gambold. And then Jeff Popio. My turn. All right, great. Well, uh, Panima and all of you, it's been a delight. Thank you very much. I just want to say this is it's a tremendously important time. This is the start of the fourth industrial revolution. We are looking at some extremely high tech AI, robotics, unmanned aircraft, and uh, the markets are global. And really, India has such tremendous potential in terms of population, market size, and global position that uh, I, I really, I think, when we're looking at vehicle to vehicle, aerial um, uh, unmanned traffic management, and uh, aspects like swarms, etc. There is a tremendous opportunity to bring this sort of technology over to India and get some very high-end, very Asia-leaning um, uh, companies up and running. And we want to be a part of that. So, thank you again, and I hope uh, I hope we carry on this relationship. Thanks. Have a great day. I would like to now invite our great partner in this webinar, Marvin, to give. Thank you and final remarks. Marvin. OK, I want to be sure that we have given everyone an equal opportunity. I want to make sure none of our guests, we didn't miss anyone. OK, with that okay. said, we're going to uh, we want to say thank you so much to each one of our guests for taking time to uh, join us for this.